playing Game Boy Advance games on the big screen has always been a popular option to enjoy the handheld's library. There are many solutions to get these games running on your living room setup, including an official Nintendo one. But in an age of digital high definition, HDMI has become the preferred medium of video output with options such as Woozle's Consolizer Kit. But now, there's another HDMI offering from the folks over at Intech with their GBA HDMI Kit. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at this. This is a kit that turns your Game Boy Advance into a home console with HDMI output, similar to the Consolizer kit from Woozle, but there are many differences between the two, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video. Now, before we move ahead, I have to mention that this console was sent to me free of charge, but rest assured, all the opinions in this video are my own, both good and bad, and Intech has not seen nor do they know the contents of this video before me posting it. Anyway, now with all that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So to give you some background, Intech wanted to make a kit that converts a standard Game Boy Advance handheld into a home-like console that connects to your television via HDMI. Additionally, they wanted to make this kit something that is accessible to a lot of people in terms of putting the kit together, which basically translates to no soldering needed at all. So in order to accomplish this, they've actually taken a rather novel approach, which utilizes these pogo pins to make all the necessary connections throughout the Game Boy Advance motherboard, instead of going with the more traditional route of soldering all the various connections using wires. I think this is a really cool design choice, and I can't wait to see how it all works. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to go over all the parts that come in this kit by doing a quick unboxing of the package. Then I'll show you how to put everything together, go over all of its features, compare this unit to some of the other options that are out there, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So unfortunately, Intech sent me a fully assembled unit, but that doesn't mean we can't take it apart and then put it back together. This wouldn't be a retro renew episode if I didn't build something. Okay, so taking a look at the packaging, it comes in a pretty nondescript cardboard box. Not sure if this is what the final packaging will look like, but it's certainly more of a retail product than some of the other kits I have looked at on this channel. Opening the box up, we are greeted with a pretty nice full color manual. It provides instructions on how to build the unit, as well as how to operate its various features, such as Bluetooth pairing for wireless controllers. Setting that aside, next we have the unit itself. Again, this was unfortunately sent already assembled, but no worries, I'll be taking it apart and guiding you on how it's supposed to be assembled. Here we have the accessories box, which contains the cabling for the GBA styled controller. Inside we have a baggie with various items to assist with the kit installation. A full size HDMI cable, a USB type A to USB C cable to power the unit, and of course the controller, which utilizes a SNES connector. I'll also be disassembling this so I can show you how it's put together. So now that we went over all the contents of the kit, let's take it apart. Let's start first with the console itself. That was easy. Here you can see the outer shells, the primary interface board, the Game Boy Advance motherboard, the 32 pin ribbon cable and buttons, and the screws. Next, let's take a look at the controller. Here we have the custom SNES cable, the custom PCB, the GBA shell, and of course the screws to hold it all together. Okay, so we took everything apart. Now let me show you how to put it back together. Alright, to get started, let's grab the GBA motherboard that came installed in the kit. You'll notice they already prepped the board by removing the speaker. If you're starting from scratch, which will most likely be the case, you can either desolder it, or if you don't have experience soldering, you can just cut it off. Next, take the included eraser and use it to clean the various contacts. All the areas are clearly marked in the instruction manual. This is a completely safe way to clean your contacts. I actually use this method all the time to clean the contacts on cartridge-based games whenever I acquire new ones. Next, grab the included 32-pin ribbon cable and install it with the contacts facing up. 
This kit is compatible with both 32 and 40 pin model GBAs. I'm assuming the DIY kit will come with both ribbon cables. Now go ahead and grab the interface board and install the ribbon into the connector on the board. Once it's locked in, go ahead and flip everything over and take note of the two metal bosses here and here. Gently fold the GBA motherboard on top of the interface board and align it with the two bosses. And then secure the motherboard to the interface board, making sure to use the correct screws. These are machine screws and are not self-tapping screws, like most of the other ones in the kit. Here you can see all the pogo pins making contact with all the various pads on the motherboard. It's a pretty elegant way of making all the necessary connections. Now let's put everything into the shell. Grab the top shell and install the power and Bluetooth pairing buttons. And then take note of the aspect ratio switch and make sure it is oriented in the same position as the requisite switch on the interface board. Then grab the interface board by the SNES controller port and install it into the top shell at an angle making sure the HDMI and USB-C ports are aligned and fit into their respective openings. And of course, make sure that the aspect ratio switch is operating correctly. Now, before we install the bottom shell, make sure the volume is turned all the way up and the power switch is turned to the on position. Then install the bottom shell and secure it with the four self-tapping screws. And finally, install the included rubber feet. Great, now let's make the controller by grabbing the GBA which has all the buttons, membranes, triggers, and even the screen already installed. Then take the included controller PCB and set it in place. Then secure it with the two included screws. It looks like there should have been a third screw installed here, but mine didn't come with one. Test the buttons and triggers to make sure everything feels okay. Then install the custom SNES controller cable. They even designed this custom cable stop so that it doesn't get ripped out accidentally, which is pretty nice. Then go ahead and drop on the rear shell and fasten all seven screws to button it all up. And there you have it, the GBA HDMI kit. I am always in favor of options, and this kit from Intec is yet another way to play Game Boy Advance games on the big screen utilizing original hardware. It even brings a few new tricks to the table. So let's go ahead and go over them. First, one of the more unique features of the Intec kit is that you can pair it with Bluetooth controllers such as this PS4 one. And it is also documented to work with the Switch Pro controller as well as the Xbox One. Pairing is pretty simple. All you need to do is press the pair button until you see the blue LED flashing quickly. Then, demonstrating with the PS4 controller, enter into pairing mode by pressing the PS and share button at the same time. Once you have a solid LED on both the controller and the GBA, you're all set. Another nice feature is the injection molded plastic shell. It seems to be fairly good quality and the overall design is pretty attractive. I especially like the smoked translucent bottom. Now another feature that isn't visible when looking at the kit is the installation experience. Now while I didn't get the full experience, I have to say that Intec really did try and make this accessible to a lot of people since it doesn't require any soldering. To that end, I think this is really fantastic and, as far as I can tell, pretty well executed. Now, one of the simple quality of life features that this kit has is the full-size HDMI port. You don't need to mess around with any dongles or adapters. Most people have plenty full-size HDMI cables lying around, and there's even one included in the box. Also, around back is a switch to toggle between the different aspect ratios, 16x9 and 4x3. Now, unfortunately, neither of these are the actual aspect ratios of the Game Boy Advance, which is 3x2. So no matter which one it's on, the image really won't look quite right. It'll either look squished with 4x3, or it'll look stretched in 16x9. I know for some folks, this will be a deal breaker. Right next to the switch is a USB-C port, which is used to power the device. I'm really glad they didn't go with a micro USB port. And of course, since this kit utilizes original hardware, it is compatible with all Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and original Game Boy games. It even has these clips so you can use accessories such as the wireless adapter. And the last feature is this AV port which utilizes a 3.5mm audio jack to output composite video. This could be great if you wanted to easily use this device with a CRT monitor. So those are all the features. 
Now let's take a look at how this kit compares with some of the other options that are out there. For this, I'm going to primarily focus on video output quality by utilizing the 160p test suite. The first thing I want to compare are the aspect ratios. First, let's compare the 16x9 aspect ratio of the Intech kit to the output of Woozle's Consoleizer kit. As you can see, the Consoleizer has the correct aspect ratio when checking out the linearity test. On the Intech kit, these circles look more like ovals. And here's the same comparison with Intech's 4x3 aspect ratio. Now, another thing that's immediately noticeable is the sharpness of the video output on the Intech kit, or should I say, lack thereof. The Intech kit has a pretty soft image, especially when compared to Woozle's Consoleizer. It's honestly a night and day difference. Just look at the blocky pixels of Woozle's Consoleizer compared to the much softer video output of the Intech kit. However, when compared to the Game Boy Player for the GameCube, both are comparable and definitely on the softer side. So while Woozle's kit does appear to be superior in every way when it comes to video output, there is one key difference, and that is price. Woozle's kit will cost you roughly $160, and that doesn't even include the case. When you add a really nice case like the one that Laser Bear offers, that's another 50 bucks. So 210 for a Woozle do-it-yourself kit. Compare that to the $135 for the DIY kit from Intech, which does come with a shell as well as a controller kit. And let's say that the Woozle kit is slightly beyond your skill set to reasonably be able to build yourself. Well, you can buy a pre-made unit, but that will cost you around $500 from websites like GameTech US, which is pretty expensive. On the other hand, a fully pre-built Intech kit will cost you $200 shipped. That's a staggering difference in price. So yes, while technically superior in video output quality, the Woozle Consoleizer does come at a premium. And for some, the premium is probably justified. Which now leads me to the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, the one that sticks out the most to me is the ease at which one could successfully build this kit on their own. I think Intech really thought outside of the box with their design using the pogo pins, which negates the need to solder. It's a really cool design choice. I also rather like the design of the kit. It's pretty sleek, with a nice injection molded plastic shell, with the convenience of a full-size HDMI port, and an SNES controller port in the front, which works really well with my 8-bit do SN30 controller. And speaking of controllers, the fact that this is natively compatible with Bluetooth enabled controllers out of the box is amazing. Pairing it with my PS4 controller was quick, easy, and straightforward. Continuing with the controller theme, I really like that they included a small kit to transform all the leftover parts from your harvested Game Boy Advance to turn that into a controller. Again, this is some more of that thinking out of the box, which I think is really great. And probably one of the biggest pros is price. At about $135 shipped for the DIY kit, I think this is one of the more affordable ways to bring GBA games to your living room setup utilizing original hardware. It's an overall nice package that allows those who want a simple DIY kit the ability to connect their GBA to an HD television, or even for those who want to capture footage or stream content. Anyway, now let's get into the cons. And really, I think you know what I'm going to say here. The biggest weakness of this kit is the video output quality. The aspect ratio isn't quite right, and the image is pretty soft. This will for sure be a deal breaker for some. And the only other con, which really isn't a con at all, are those pogo pins that make the entire mod possible. While I think they're awesome and greatly increase the simplicity of the mod, I can potentially see it being somewhat finicky if they aren't aligned properly during the installation process. I myself didn't run into any issues, but it's always a possibility. So after seeing all the comparison footage and listening to the pros and cons, if you think you're interested in getting one of these, you can do so by heading over to their Kickstarter page, which I'll have linked down below. And as with all Kickstarters, there's always that risk when it comes to final product delivery or even the success of the campaign. Just make sure you keep that in mind. So who do I think this kit is for? Well, that honestly depends on each individual. I think this is a great option for those that want a relatively simple and solder-free kit to consoleize their Game Boy Advance and don't necessarily mind the video output issues such as the aspect ratio and softness of the image. However, if you're someone who wants the very best when it comes to video output quality, sadly, I don't think this kit is for you. Regardless, as I've always said, it's great to have options. And I think there are plenty of people who will find this to be a compelling product. 
Anyway, what do you all think? If you could change one thing on the Intec GB8 kit, what would it be? Let me know down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.